Hey guys, Adam Rose, Vice President and Senior Loan Officer of Western Ohio Mortgage here in Sydney, Ohio. This is another ep episode of the Mortgage Guide Podcast, and this is the one where you're going to learn a little bit about rent and why we do rent verifications, why it's so important, and what kind of an impact it can have on your findings or your credit approval. Uh, a lot of people overlook this and don't think it's a big deal because there's so many programs out there, right, that you don't bring any money to the closing table. There's no down payment requirements, what have you, financing stuff in. And rent is overlooked by, I think, the, a majority of the populace out there. Uh, they don't believe it holds much water. Unfortunately, it does. So, and we can get caught with our pants down if we don't do the proper documentation and homework up front to make sure we don't get, uh, get bit here. So, we typically, when you're doing your application, one of the first questions you are asked is about your address history, where you lived for two years, right? Everything we do is based around two years, it seems like. Two years of employment, two years of housing history, you name two years of taxes. This is what we're looking at and documenting and kind of confirming a lot of this data marries up with how you filed your taxes, where you live, your license, all this fun stuff, okay? Seems a little irrelevant, right? But unfortunately to an underwriter, it all has to match and marry up to make sure the story makes sense. Well. One big piece that we use is rental history, okay? There's a lot of ways you can look at it, a lot of things that kind of feed into this, a lot of ways to actually help improve a file by using rental history. So why do we use it? First question we're going to ask when we collect your address and, and information about your residential history is, do you rent yes or no, okay? If the answer is no, I am going to be looking for other compensating factors to make sure I can make this deal work whether you have a bunch of money saved right in the bank, whether, I don't know, you have a bunch of other credit lines open and active that show a, a good credit history and payment history, um, those types of things. Uh, the reason this is so important is because we're going to use that as a couple of items, right? One, it can be used on a thin credit profile, right? So we talked about thin credit before and how we can get these, these deals done by adding alternative lines of credit, you remember a lot of people were talking about how they didn't like the fact that we could add, you know, subscription services and how that's that's not a good thing. Uh, but rent is one of those things, right? So, like, let me let's talk about USDA for example. So USDA is a no down payment program, and let's say you've only had I don't know one credit card in your name for the past twelve months. That is thin credit, right? Well, in order to get over the hump, let's say you have a weaker credit score that is a manual underwrite. Well, manual underwriting has different guidelines to get your file approved, right? We have to have so many trade lines, usually three, in your name for 12 months or more to make it fly. Well, rent and rental history in USDA land basically counts as double for us, right? You can have, if you have 12 months of rent history, you only need one other line of credit and you actually qualify for USDA financing on the manual and manual underwriting criteria. So that is an important piece of this. So if we ask you, do you rent? Yes or no. And you say it's a thousand bucks a month. I usually ask, do you rent from family or do you pay an individual landlord? Why does that matter? Well, if you're renting from family, which is not, it's pretty common, right? It is. It's uh, you rent from mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, or you live in, in a duplex with them, what have you, whatever the situation is. Uh, the reason it's important is because we can't go down the traditional uh, pathway of doing a verification of rent through the credit bureau to validate it. Okay. Why is because if we contact a family member asking them if you rent from them and we ask them, do they pay as agreed? Of course, they're going to say yes. So we're not going to hold any, that's not going to hold any water, right? Not, it's irrelevant at that point because they're going to tell us whatever we want to hear. People ask about rent receipts. Rent receipts are irrelevant as well because I can sit down and write 12 rent receipts in about 10 minutes, right? Same thing. Doesn't matter. It's not showing the track record. So if you are renting from family, we're going to ask you for a couple of things. How do you pay is important. So if you say I pay by check, fantastic. That's beautiful, right? We'll collect 12 months of a canceled check and we'll get you documented. If you say cash, that can be documented. It's a little bit more challenging, of course. We got to get 12 months of bank statements to show the consistent withdrawal activity coming out of your account that, you know, if it's a thousand bucks, we see, you know, a thousand dollars every uh, towards the end of every month, or maybe 500 here and 500 there every month to show you yep, up. That makes sense. Uh, you know, I can put that puzzle together. And so on top of the cash piece, you know, you're, you're giving all that money to them. And we have to document that 12 months of bank statements. You also could do transfers, which is fine. That's easy to document. Zelle, Venmo, you know, cash app, what have you. And, and we can deal with it. Okay, guys. So we got to be able to document it. But if you rent from family 
and you pay cash and it's just at random, more than likely I cannot use the rent history. And why it's so important, like I mentioned, we can use it as an alternative line of credit, but it's also going to tell us if you have housing shock or you don't have housing shock. Okay. If you're paying $1,000 a month in rent and you are a borderline file and you're going up to $3,000 a month, right? That's kind of a problem if we don't have a ton of money in the bank. But if it's a borderline file and you've got a $1,000 rent history that I can document and you're going to you know, $1,100 or $1,200 house payment, that's truly a lateral move uh, in our eyes. And so it strengthens your file quite significantly. So let's move on to you pay an individual landlord. Okay, so... Nice thing here is we're going to do a verification of rent because they are third party. They're not interested in regardless uh, you know, or in your situation, right? They're not going to just tell us what we want to hear. They're going to tell us the truth if you had late payments and what have you. Um, so we're going to collect landlord name information. We're going to marry it up, match it up with the auditor side to show that they are the people that own the property. Um, because we have had those situations where someone else does the verification of rent, but it's not the actual owner. A lot of times it could be a family member doing it for them or a property manager. So we do have to document that and make sure that's okay, of course. So the nice thing about the landlord piece is, yes, we can do the verification uh, through the credit bureaus, but it's also um, going to tell us how long you've been living there, right? So it's going to help us, you know, if you put 12 months, but it's 18 or 12 months and actually ends up being nine, right? That can create some different problems uh, with the file. So that's why we're also confirming that history. Now, when we get this verification of rent back, we talk about how important it is to help support or strengthen your file, but we don't talk enough about how it can actually damage you if the information you provide is inaccurate. Example, let's say you've been renting at the same place for, I don't know, two years, okay? You say, yep, rent's great, uh, no problems there, never had a 30-day pass due payment, nothing, we're in good shape. Uh, and I'm relying on that verification of rent, of rent to come back good, maybe because you're thin credit or it's a manual underwrite. And let's say that verification comes back and it says, yeah, they've had uh, you know two 30-day past due payments in the last 12 months. Well, here's the problem with it. In our world, we're going to look at that as mortgage history, right? Housing history is what it is. If you've had two 30-day lates on your rent, there, we have all reason to believe that you are not going to be able to make your house payment, especially if you're going from a $1,000 house or rental payment to, I don't know, 1500 or something like that. If there's a jump and you've already missed payments here, we believe that you might miss payments on your mortgage. It can create a problem in underwriting. It could be a denial. All right. Um, so, so that's something why it's so important just to be honest with us. Tell us we've got to get through that stuff. Um, and to make sure that we're not going to get tripped up in the middle of this process. Another big thing with rental history, uh, that I don't talk about enough and uh, is Fannie and Freddie. So over the last, I don't know, it's probably been 12, 18 months now, you can plug in the rental history when you run your findings with conventional financing, Fannie and Freddie. It can take a file from uh, not approved or denied with conventional financing to an approved eligible with that housing history. Because uh, that's reading the payment shock. Is there any housing shock? It is reading like you had a mortgage in the past. And they put a lot of weight on that. If you've been making those house payments regularly and you are used to those house payments, there's no reason to believe you won't be able to make the next one, right? So a lot of this plays a role. So guys, I hope that's very helpful. Uh, so make sure when you were talking to your lender and we're talking about rental histories, whether you do or don't rent, make sure you're honest with them. A lot of that information is very, very pertinent for your file and can be the difference between a denial and an approval, okay? If you have any questions, you make sure you reach out to us along our banner. You will see at the bottom. You can contact us anytime at 497-9662, and we can have a consultation. Other than that, guys, I hope to see you all next week. And remember, subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and we'll see you all next week.